Ah, jolly good. But we're going to start uh, slightly more gently with uh, Sir Cliff Richard, oh, who has been a prominent figure in pop music and show business since the 1950s, possibly the 1850s. No, really. He first <laughs> topped the oh. charts. Harold Macmillan was Prime Minister, Dwight D. Eisenhower was President of the United States, and Bruce Forsyth was a big star on Saturday evening television. Between then and now, worldwide, Cliff has sold something like, is it 250 million records? But whatever it is, it's not enough, as he's about to release his 140th single, uh, which comes from his 100th album, The Fabulous Rock and Roll Songbook. And uh, there's a DVD also available, still reeling and rocking live in Sydney. So, so Sir Cliff, what, what drives you on still oh, I rocking? Think, I think it's just time to say thank you and goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't say that. That's, <laughs> an end, that's the end of your career. Yeah, I, that's an amazing introduction. I mean, I can't really wait to meet me. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you know, but I, you're still I, rocking I, I when did, other people are in their rocking well, chairs. So you're what's, what's keeping exactly, you going? You're absolutely right to mention the kind of possibility of starting in 1858. Yeah. I did start in 1958, but it does feel. I mean, that although it's 55 plus years, it seems to have flown by. Yeah. I don't know what's happened. Uh, I had no idea that this album was going to be the hundredth album when I recorded it. Another album. Yeah. But uh, it's. Uh, I feel sometimes that um, I still love it so much that it's difficult to stop. Yeah. I, I don't want to stop. But how has how's it managed? Have you managed to keep going? Because you were, you were there. You were, a, you, you were our first kind of rock star in this country. You had records. Well, there was Marty films, Wilde. There Marty, was Marty Wilde. Yeah. If you're, in fact, um, I've been doing a lot of interviewing recently. And uh, they said, well, how did you start? I said, well, I started on a TV show called Oh Boy. Yeah. And when you see a clip of Oh Boy, there was me and Marty Wilde singing together. He looked really cool, and I did look like a greasy slob. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how I've survived, but I think I've got better. I've, yeah. I've worked really hard at it. You but know, you try also, to make yourself look like a greasy slob. You're trying to be a sort of Elvis kind to, of look. Yeah, yeah, that sort of sneer I, you put I on your. I put the quiff on and I tried yeah. to. Get, if the lip, if I ever got a photograph with the lip, lip yeah. up, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> I felt really good. But you know, after a little while, you realise, yeah. you know, as I got more mature, <laughs> I realised you can't really have a career unless you're an impersonator. Yeah. Then you can have a career impersonating Elvis. But. There's no way I could have a career like this if I had actually remained just wanting to be like him all the time. I only wanted to be like him in terms of the effect I had. Yeah. And you, um, you had a couple, like him, you did some films, but some of yours, you know, uh, I'd say you sort of outranked him in filmmaking. You know, like Summer Holiday remains quite I a classic, you know, yeah, turning a double-decker bus to go <laughs> on holiday, that's, that's the remains the dream, doesn't it? Was, it? It, it does. does. It, was, yeah. I, it was beyond me. I never even thought that I'd actually get my career started. Yeah. Within two months, I made a movie called Serious Charge, yeah. Um, and it was an X-rated movie, would you believe? So, and, and the what did you get up to in it, for goodness sake? I sang I, Living Doll. Yeah, well, that, that didn't <laughs> make it X-rated. <laughs> it, it saved yeah. the film. <laughs> what do you do with all your money? Oh, <laughs> oh well, great, that's a fabulous <laughs> question. Yeah. I'm certainly going to ask you when it comes to you. Well, but, but Richard, listen, when you talk about the movies we made, I think I made 750 quid for a summer holiday. But you know, in, in those days, you could buy a house for a couple of grand. Yeah. So uh, now you can't buy a summer holiday for seven hundred. No, certainly. Yeah. So if you yeah. if you sold yeah. two hundred fifty million, how um, th that translates into houses? Do you own houses all over? I do. I've done pretty well. Yeah. And of course, the two hundred fifty <laughs> million. Isn't it a big day class A to ask somebody how much they earn? Yeah, well, that's why we have people like you this. Have have the, the savage <laughs> each other. That you, may, you may have noticed I'm not coming up with a direct yeah. answer. Yeah. Well, know, you, live in Bar you live in Barbados, so I assume yes. you've got a house there. And I know I you you there. cultivate wine in Portugal. In Portugal. So, so, yeah. so they got. I, I have it, a pied de terre in New York. I love going to America because nobody knows me there and I can wander around like everybody else. It's fantastic. They don't realize what we have to give up to be famous. And I don't mind because I liked, I liked the recognition. It's been wonderful to sign autographs for people, have them scream at you on stage. But to actually go out with friends and not be bothered at all during the meal is fabulous. Yes. I, Do I, they make you pay because you've got so much money? <laughs> well, they still make me pay. They Which do. Is, well, yes. they must make you pay as yeah. well. Come on. I'm sorry, we don't, know, we 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 do normally obsess oh, over so people's sorry. wealth on this <laughs> program. <laughs> <laughs> Now look, you've, you've uh, had, had your career has been interesting uh, for many reasons. One, one of which is you don't cultivate the image of the you know sex, drugs, and rock, rock and roll rock star, which most people we like our rock stars to be recovering heroin addicts I mean, or so, and multiple so, sexual conquests. So we like, but you don't do that. How no, have you I, managed I, to survive? I've always said the reason why I've survived is because I've probably been the only radical 
pop rock star there is. Yeah. I have refused to do what everyone else did. I did not thrash up a, a hotel room. Yeah. My band used to say, no, he's the only one that goes in and cleans it. <laughs> <laughs> you must have sometimes left the taps running or something. Just no, to, just I try to not to. Yeah. I switch lights off all the time. Yeah. <laughs> my father, my father yeah. always switched lights off. And even now I find myself doing it. I'm saying, don't do it. This is not your house. Yeah. Yeah, I'll still switch <laughs> lights yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> But where, where it's, um, you've complained uh, more recent in recent decades that you, the radio stations won't even play your records. You're yeah, I complained originally because they asked me what I thought about it all, and I said, well, I don't understand why you're cutting us out. And I made a pretty good argument, and I remember doing this right at that BAFTA building mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. London, and I did this big thing amongst all the radio people, and I got a standing ovation, and, and they still stopped playing it. Yeah. But you can't force people to play your records. I realise that. you know. So you have to move with the times and say, okay, they're not going to play it, so how can I sell records? And now what we do is we make projects. So I've done a, a love album, a duets album with people like Olivia Newton-John, yeah. Elton John, a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And the rock and roll songbook yes. is you know what it's going to be on it. You, you probably don't need massive airplay for it. Yeah. And so therefore you can still have a sale. You can still be a... Pop rock so this rock and roll songbook, you've gone back to the sort of the classics of rock of late 50s, early 60s, what the I've Chuck tried to, Berry, Elvis Presley yeah, kind of era. Uh, what I've tried to do is, you know, if you mention the American song, the great American songbook, you know what you're going to get. It's going to be the music from the 30s, 40s, mm. fabulous stuff by Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra. And I've got a song on there called Fabulous, written by a guy called Charlie Gracie. It was a minor hit. Well, yeah. number eight in our charts then. And, um, and I thought, I'm going to call it the fabulous rock and roll songbook and it turns out that no one's ever done that before isn't that strange i would have thought I, the record company checked it they said no one's used that title so now i'm thinking maybe anybody richard if you want to make a record yeah. and you want to do all old rock and roll song you just call it the Fabulous Rock and Roll Songbook by Richard E. Grant. Don't give your title away. So you've got classics on there, sort of poetry, emotion, seal with a kiss, to, you know, Elvis's teddy bear, things yeah. like that. Even uh, Wake Up Little Susie, which is uh, it's really which about is two teenagers brothers. staying out staying out late. Slightly oh, odd at your age to be singing. Well, not, no more odd, because I had Vince Gill singing with me, who was yeah. also of an age. Yeah. But he's like... Uh, <laughs> He's like country monarchy. You know, when I went to Nashville, you know, when that guy said to me, my producer said, I said, I'll do the high harmony now. He said, look, why don't we, uh, why, wait, I can get Vince Gill to come in. And Vince Gill is a fantastic singer, mm -hmm. plays incredible guitar. And do you know what? I realize now I can sing these lyrics and it, it means the same as it did when yeah. I was 18. Yeah. I think age is not a necessity anymore. But, it's but how I, you feel. Well, what about this sort of, uh, I just pursue this point, because uh, you're, you're well known for your, your religious faith, and your, uh, but that's, uh, we, we're more um, accommodating, say the Rolling Stones can sing Sympathy for the Devil, but if you sing uh, I've Got a Friend in Jesus, that won't get on a, a record station. That, we we want our rock stars to be evil I, people. I don't know how many they've sold, but I don't think they've sold 300 million. Oh, you're, oh you're, you're outranking the Rolling Stones, you think? Well, I don't yeah. know. I've never yeah. heard of their record sales, but apparently... I think um, they rub along, all right, but they do have to... They've, they, they've, they, the they do have to... Um, <laughs> they do have to do the odd live concert, I'm just they? saying that it really, it really doesn't matter. There's, the, yeah. the, it's like... I always thought that rock and roll was like a huge supermarket, and sometimes you yeah. walk right past the Cliff Richard record and buy the Rolling Stones one. Yeah. Sometimes you walk right by and buy the Neil Diamond or the Tina Turner yeah. or whatever, you know? And yeah. so we're all part of the same sure. business, and we all have our little niche, yeah. but my my little niches. You mentioned two hundred fifty million, but that was uh, that was a thing that they they worked out uh, twenty five years ago. I'm thinking there must have been five more <laughs> yeah. million. Don't don't say any more because wow. Richard E. Grant will just explode <laughs> with <laughs> jealousy. <laughs> uh, I just want to ask you one more one more question, which unites the people around this table because there are three guests I'm interviewing here, all of whom were born outside the country. Oh, um, which is a, you know, I'm, I'm sure the Daily Mail is very very pleased about this. Uh, so we only got Sir Ronald Fine, who was born here, but he's spent his time going off elsewhere. <laughs> but so, yeah. Can you just remember, because I think you came about 1948, you, yes. you were born in India, came down, which is probably not the best time to see Britain at its finest, 1948, with rationing the coldest winter. Can you remember your first memory? Was it a huge disappointment or an uh, excitement or what? No, it wasn't. The, uh, it was fantastic. I remember when we got, came to the railway station, we came on a boat to Tilbury Docks, then we got to Karshelton Railway Station, and there were trees hanging over it. All the railway stations in India, that were, in Calcutta, were just cement blocks. Yeah. And I, I loved that. Mm -hmm. And I had a pretty tough time that my father uh, couldn't get a job. I mean, after, mm -hmm. just after the war, there was rationing going on. He did anything to make money and mm -hmm. did everything and anything. And so for me as a child, though, the only disturbance was that um, I was always in fights at school. 
because I was swarthy, I suppose. I came from India. I had a suntan, which yeah. I don't... Well, I do have a tan still, but I work on it. Yeah. But <laughs> I got bullied and beaten up, and I beat, yeah. I beat back. I yeah. became a bit of a fighter. Did, really. did you have a sort of Indian kind of accent? Was that part did you, of the Do you speak no. Hindi? Pardon? Okay. Do you speak Hindi? No, but I started to speak Bengali. I started to learn Bengali, but I still oh, think like Darvaja Bangoro, which that means shut, shut the door. that door. Shut that door. Nikki's from India as well. You said it. Claims but, to be. But, Darvaja Bangoro. Darvaja Bangoro. Yeah. Oh. There you go. <laughs> this interview is spinning out of my control. It's Richard E. Grant talking about money and Nikki talking about Indian languages. And chakras. Look. It'll but how old, how old, if you came here in 1948, how old were you in 1948? Eight. I was having my eighth birthday here. Yeah. I go with the years. All right. Now, well, you, you're certainly going with the years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're surviving with the years. Now, this uh, record we talk about, the single is Rip It Up. We're going to just play a little extract from that before we have to move on. But I, I think we're going to persuade you to stay here and maybe do some live music for us towards the end yeah, of the show. I've we, got my guitar. We've got your guitar. Thank you, you very much. So anyway, <laughs> we'll have asked. But here's you in recorded form. Let's just have a little snatch of Rip It Up. OK, that's from the fabulous rock and roll songbooks available on Monday the 11th of November on Rhino Records. Still reeling and rocking live in Sydney available on DVD at the same day and uh, we'll be hearing from Sir Cliff later on in the show but uh, just doing it for us here. As promised earlier I'm going to um, encourage uh, Sir Cliff to go to the you can go to that microphone there if you like yeah. to get I've full could, oh, no, I, would you rather got, do it here? I've got no strap for the guitar. No strap for the guitar. Yeah, so I'll just you see all your money's gone on houses you can't afford a strap <laughs> for the guitar. It's a strapped out. Yeah. <laughs> a strap for cash is a definition isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so what are you going to play for? Some, well, something old, play. something new? So I'm going to say something old, something that I did of my first ever record that I got yeah. lucky, lucky with, and I was going to say I, they, I could never do ballet. <laughs> on, could, I on, think you could. No, I mean, you well, could do I'm anything. No, I'm available, but not cheap. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so your first one. This was going to be a B-side originally, wasn't it? It was actually, yeah. and it was Jack Good, the director of the first TV show I did, yeah. who said if you want him on the show, he has to sing "Move It," which was the B-side. Yeah. And and in those days, record companies were very adventurous. They turned everything around, and yeah. sure enough, it and was here, a, and the rest yeah. is history. History. Yeah. 